How's it going, everybody? Coming to you today because we are going to be doing first shots, first thoughts with the Springfield SA-35. This is a gun I've been very excited about. I've had to wait about two years to be able to get my hands on one, but I finally got one. We're going to do an unboxing, we're going to do an accuracy test, and then we're going to just do some planking. So stick around. We're going to dive right into it now. Okay, so when you buy your Springfield Armory, SA-35, you're going to get a lovely cardboard box. Inside the cardboard box, you will get one little pamphlet. Tells you that you have to go online to get your manual and your warranty. And there's that. This area that says accessories. You open this up, and the only thing that's in here is your little chamber flag and this is where the lock would go i already took the lock out when i was at home because i don't ever use those locks but um little misleading because it says accessories and all that's there is a lock now that leads you to your main package here this is just a little uh nylon case um nothing special does have springfield armory on it little zippered nylon case and you open it up and inside you have the pistol and one 15 round magazine you can see it's got the uh, springfield armory logo on it metal magazine one magazine and then here is this beauty of a pistol you can see i got a little bit of packing gunk on it i don't know what that is um i did take it apart filled strip it and oil it and that is all i have done but she is pretty the checkered walnut grips feel good in the hand. You got decent white dot sight with a rear notch. Safety, your hammer. And just to show you, it is empty and there is no magazine because it only comes with one magazine. Come on, Springfield. But it is a very pretty gun. Um, the fit and finish is awesome. The only complaint I've got is on mine, I've got some sort of gunk that came on the front sight here. And it's not like the finish. I don't know what it is. But I didn't want to mess it up and scrape it off. And I wanted to show you guys that mine did come with some sort of gunk on it. So, But all in all, uh, fit and finish is very nice. Fits very well in the hand. The uh, overall aesthetics of the gun is beautiful. Um, it's not like an actual traditional blued finish. Uh, it's more of like a matte finish. Um, and I'm okay with that. I really... I think it looks very, very good. Uh, it fits in the hand good. And I am super, super excited to try it out and to see how it shoots. Um, it's not an exact uh, high point clone. Uh, Springfield did make some changes to it, but it is very, 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 very close. And uh, yeah, so it is a beauty all right let's load it up and get to the fun part and we're going to be shooting from uh approximately five yards i just want to see kind of how it shoots point of aim point of impact i am using standard 115 grain ball ammunition just the cheap stuff that you would buy at any of your local stores uh, it does hold 15 rounds in the factory mag 
There are some aftermarket mags, uh, 10 round, 13 round, uh, 15 rounds, and 17 rounds are what I've seen. Uh, there might be more, uh, something you could get with an extended base plate or whatever, but the, uh, the factory Springfield mag is only a 15 round mag. Uh, I said we're just gonna do some shots for accuracy, see how it prints, and uh, go from there. So here we are, first shots, Springfield SA35. Let's see how it does. Okay, I am yanking the trigger on this. Uh, those first three shots are not indicative of this gun. I don't know what I'm doing, but I just, I yanked the crap out of them. Uh, cold shots, first shots, let me, whew, and try this again. Okay, once I slowed down and I did my part much better, the first three shots with one, two, and three. I don't know why I yanked them that hard, but I felt myself just bam, bam, I was pushing down. All the next shots here, I mean, that is, uh, that's, that's good. Uh, especially as you can see too we got a little bit of wind probably hear the wind as well but this is moving slightly back and forth very happy with that those first three shots 100 my fault i don't know why but i was just yeah yeah so we're gonna back up here to about 10 yards and uh see if i can do from here I opened up the group some, but still, I think it's uh, extremely effective for the uh, distance. Nothing, 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 all clear. So let's go see. Uh, I did start kind of pulling them around, but that's still 10 yards, first time with the gun. I'll take that. Uh, the trigger on it is different. It's not bad, but the trigger is different. Um, the reset feels weird. I've been shooting uh, double action revolvers and uh, striker fired guns for a while now. So it's been a while since I've shot a uh, hammer fired gun with that uh, single action trigger. And it feels weird to me. I've got to get used to it. And it also, the reset, it doesn't have like your normal reset that you would have with a uh, your, your standard Glock, uh, LMP, striker fired type gun. Uh, nothing wrong with this one, but I've got to get used to it because it is so different than what I have been shooting. But still, I mean, at five yards, doing that at 10 yards opened up a little bit still extremely effective you're covering with the palm of the hand uh, i like to use rule of thumb and if i can cover it with my thumb it's good uh, i can almost cover what i did at 10 with my with my thumb um, but i would have liked it to have been over further i've got to get used to the sight picture which i do like it's got a nice uh wide u-notch 
nice dot, but I've got to get used to this gun. It is different than what I'm used to, but uh, I'm impressed with it. Uh, first shots, five yards, 10 yards when I do my part. This part down here, that was me not following my fundamentals. Uh, so once you do your fundamentals, it, it is a good shooting gun. So I'll take that, cover up these little ones down here where it was my fault. Uh, I'll take that right there. I think that's good. Okay, so this time I've got 115 grain Federal American Eagle. Uh, trying the SA-35 at about 15 yards. I've got an eight inch steel gong. Uh, gonna try shooting it and uh, we'll just keep moving back as I shoot. Uh, again, 15 rounds, 115. Hopefully the camera will pick up the gong if I hit it or not. Um, I had never shot this, I just bought this target. So I'm trying it out, see if I like it. Uh, see if you guys like it instead of just printing on paper and showing you the paper. Maybe this way you can hear me hit. So here we go, 115 grain, uh, Federal American Eagle. I don't know if the camera picked that up, but I hit it. The gong is swinging, so we'll move back a little bit. I've got to find a, a good reference point for my sights. Uh, that U-notch gives me a little bit more leeway. Uh, it's a good combat sight, but for pinpoint accuracy, I'm a little eh on it. Uh, Gong is at now at about 20 yards. Got it twice. Moving on back. Okay. Oh, if I can get the camera to set down. We're at about uh, 30, 32-ish yards here. I'm afraid if I shoot with the gun too close to the camera, the, uh, the camera will shut down the sound and you won't be able to hear the ping. So we'll see what happens. Got it again, both times. So now, ugh. and now here we are at about 40 yards. You can't really see it, but it's right there. Don't worry, it is. It looks closer to my truck than it is truck's far enough away it's not going to get any splatter not going to get anything on it uh 40 yards with a handgun normally i don't shoot this far i try to think of everything in the ways of uh uh actual usable defense scenarios and uh it would be really hard in my opinion for you to be able to safely get away with a 40 yard shot in a self-defense scenario. However, I know there are times that that happens, but I personally just don't shoot this far with the handgun generally. Now it is an eight inch gong. Um, so you're talking roughly the size of the chest. So even if you do miss that, you would still, you know, be in the thoracic cavity somewhere. Uh, but again, I'm making all sorts of excuses because I hardly ever shoot this far. So let's see if I can even hit this thing. One out of two times. I don't know if the camera picked it up. 
uh, but I did miss the second one. And now we're gonna go 50 yards. I gotta move over a little bit. All right. So here we are at about 50 yards. Uh, see if I can at least hit once. It is uh, way outside of my normal range of shooting. <sighs> One hit, I don't know if you can hear it or not. And a miss, I just went under it. So, back to 50 yards, I was able to hit once. Uh, I hit once at about 45. I'm happy with that. Uh, oh, sorry. Some grass grabbed the uh, tripod there. Tried to pull it out of my hand. Uh, Accuracy-wise, not as well as I would like. I like, like I said, rule of thumb. But all the way out to 50 yards, the gun is still hot. The safety is on, so it's safe to handle. Fingers out of the trigger. But all the way back to 50 yards, not too bad. Looks like I aim a little low for the vast majority of it. But uh, for me, for the fact that I never go back that far, I'll take that. I hit once at 45-ish, once at 50. And uh, yeah, I, I don't ever shoot a pistol that far. So more than happy to take this out to that distance. It shoots really good on paper. Uh, let's see how she shoots fast. So here we are at about seven yards with the SA-35. At the still, the still does swing, but I'm gonna see if I can just ping the still and see what it does. Uh, as it's swinging, it does add a little bit to target acquisition, so it ought to be fun. I missed a few times not timing the swing, but uh, I think I could do it and I could shoot faster if I wasn't trying to hit a moving target. Uh, the trigger is pretty quick on it. Let's just try to shoot paper this time. I'll load up and uh, we'll do a couple of like five shot strings, something like that, just seeing how fast I can actually pull it without trying to catch the target as it's swinging back. Okay, load it up again. Gonna do a, a couple of shot strings. Just trying to shoot fast, get a feel for the trigger. Uh, once again, I'm not a speed shooter, so my fast will probably be slow compared to a lot of you guys. Uh, but anyway, let's do it. Felt like the uh, the grips shifted a little bit. Yeah, they did. The uh, screw has came loose a little bit on the grips. Uh, less than 100 rounds fired. Less than, well, yeah. Less than 100, more than 50 rounds fired. And uh, for some reason, the grips are uh, coming a little bit loose. So uh, be mindful of that. You might need to bring a screwdriver with you to tighten those up. Anyway. Here we go. The trigger does take a little bit to get used to. Um, she can be shot fast. Like I said, I'm not a speed shooter. Uh, gun is clear safe. Um, that trigger, 
Let's see if I can get it on camera for you here. It's brake. You got a little bit of slack right there. You come back, brakes, and then your reset is all the way out there. Brake. So you've basically, your reset, when it breaks, your reset is almost all the way back out. See right there's reset, and that's back out. All you're doing is taking up a little bit of slack. Uh, so a very long reset, but still that, that smooth trigger pull. I'm gonna say it's probably five pound-ish uh, trigger pull. So, I mean, it's it's light, it's crisp, but your reset is not, uh, it's not what you would be used to if you shoot a lot of Glock or if you shoot a lot of, uh, like, MMP, where you've got that, that for sure out-click bang. Out-click bang. This one, it's a little bit iffy on the, on the reset. It's not bad, but let me see if I can get you to hear it. All right, here we go. It's a very, very subtle little tick. Okay, so we've done a little bit of fast shooting. We've done a little bit of target shooting. We've done a little bit of distance shooting. Let me take you back to the tailgate. We will do our final first thoughts and first shots on the SA-35, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so uh, first thoughts after the first shots on the Springfield SA-35. And let me show you, nothing, nothing, gun is safe, hammer down, can be handled. Uh, first thoughts, uh, the gun is slick. It feels good in the hand. Uh, it, it's, it's got a good feel to it. Uh, I like the sights, that wide U-notch is really quick to pick up. Sorry about the wind. The safety is big enough and easy enough that you can engage it, you can ride it. Uh, I was worried about getting hammer bite with it. I got no hammer bite, even though it's a pretty small beaver tail. Um, fit and finish is excellent. The drips came loose. I took a screwdriver, turned about a half turn on each side, tightened them up. Uh, I didn't check from the factory, it was brand new. Might have needed a little bit of torque or it could have came loose from just shooting today. Um, she's pretty. 
It's a very pretty gun. It's a very classic gun. Uh, the line, the lines on it are, are beautiful. I think it's a great looking gun. Uh, pros shoots good, plenty accurate. Um, it's pretty, uh, man, uh, it, it's basically a hundred year old design. Um, they're tested, they're reliable. Uh, it's good looking. I keep saying it's good looking because that is one of the big factors of why I have one. Cons. Uh, cons. It's a weird trigger. It's not like a 1911. It's not like a Glock. It's not like any of the other guns you're going to be used to shooting. Uh, it's not similar to a SIG. It's not similar to a Smith & Wesson. It's different. Um, your Hellcat's going to feel different. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but when I was trying to run those speed strings, uh, there was once I stopped because it, it didn't feel right in my hand. And there's nothing wrong with the trigger mechanically. It's just so different than what I'm used to. You know, I've been shooting my double action uh, Smith & Wesson uh, m p 340, and I've got a SIG M17. Both of those triggers are way different than this one. The kind of phantom-ish uh, reset is hard to, to, to ride the reset and come back extremely fast on, uh, or extremely fast for me. Um, so the trigger's weird. Um, and I don't know if it's just me, or if it's weird for everybody, or if it's weird because I haven't shot a single action gun in a while, or if it's because I've never shot a uh, SA-35. All of them might be this way. So another con for this is going to be what you get for the price. Now this gun is about 700 bucks, roughly new. Uh, you'll find it for different prices, but let's say 650 to $800 with taxes, out the door, transfer fees, all of that. Somewhere in that neighborhood is what you're going to pay. And for that, you get a great gun, but you don't get anything else. This gun should come with a minimum of three magazines for that price. Minimum. And only coming with one mag is some BS. Uh, if, you, if you make a gun and you sell a gun and it's over $300, it should come with a minimum of three mags. I understand if you buy a high point, high point might come with one. I understand if you buy, you know, a, 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 a something like a kel 380. Okay, one mag is fine in something like that. But a $700 gun should come with way more than one magazine. Three at the minimum, five preferably. And it should be for the same price. The same 750 ish dollars, this thing should have three mags. You should be able to have three mags, one to use for range and two to use for duty that you can keep loaded up with your duty ammo. Once a year, go out, shoot that duty ammo and then reload it with new duty ammo. You should be able to have that one mag that you use for your range trips, that you drop, that you get dirty, that it doesn't matter. But there should be a minimum of three mags with this price. Um, Another thing with the price, you should get an actual hard manual, a, a actual physical hard manual copy with this gun. Telling you to go online, scan a QR code to go online to get your manual, that's just cheap. Again, if it's a $200, $300 gun, fine. I don't expect a lot. But from Springfield Armory and from a $700 gun, I expect more. That's just lazy and cheap on their part. And that kind of ticks me off. I mean, it really does. A $700 gun, $800 gun, you should get you should get what you need for that. Okay, so now with the pros and the cons out of the way, and with my little rant about the price compared to what you get out of the way, what do I think of the gun? I really like it. Uh, it's something that I would need to practice with if I wanted to be extremely proficient. It does have a manual safety. 
Manual safeties don't bother me on a handgun. I know a lot of people are, oh, a safety will get you killed. Hey. No one ever bitches about there being a safety on an AR-15. No one ever says you're going to get killed because you can't do this with your thumb on an AR-15. But you can't do this. You know, I don't understand that argument. Uh, so the safety is not an issue. But the sights and the trigger and the fact that it's a different platform than I'm used to, I would need to shoot this a lot more uh, before I wanted to consider this as a carry gun. Uh, number two, no ability for a light. I know that there's companies that make a rail that can be drilled and tapped onto the dust cover here, and then you can run a rail and then you can run a light, but that's adding bulk. That's gonna make it harder to find a, a holster for the gun. So I wouldn't go that way. Uh, if you are going to look at possibly carrying this, uh, you need to make for sure that you got some sort of handheld light that you can use while you're having to do the things you got to do with a pistol, uh, especially one that doesn't have a light. You know, if you want to do the old cross carry, if you want to do the overhead, if you want to do just however you want to do it, you know, underneath and teacup it old school style, however you want to do it, train with your light, train with the gun because it does not have a weapon mounted light. Not a deal breaker, but something to consider. Um, 15 round capacity. In today's world, 15 is pretty much normal. Uh, this used to be a high capacity gun and a full size gun that holds 15 is outdated. I'll give you that. Uh, you know, a Glock 19 holds this many, is lighter and smaller. Uh, you can get the, uh, the SIG uh, 365, XL, I think, or whichever, whichever the new Spectre, Spectre Comp, whatever. Anyway, you can get a 365 sized gun that holds 17 rounds. You can get the Hellcat Pro that holds 15 to 17 rounds. So you're getting a much lighter package that does have the ability for a weapon light that will have a greater capacity. Mm, uh, makes it to where you have to want to carry this gun over one of them. Again, doable, yes. Uh, is it ideal? Probably not. There's probably going to be better concealed carry guns. Is it a, a nice gun? Yes. Do I really like it? Yes. Uh, am I mad that I bought it? No. Uh, will I continue to shoot it? Yes. Will I probably carry it? At some point in time, yeah. Like today where it's kind of cold out and I've got a jacket on, I can easily run it concealed I can even have this jacket open and if I have to you can go to town fairly easily and you know so it is concealable and it is uh, I don't want to say go to war ready but it is something that has been proven over time that it's a reliable platform. It's a strong shooter. Uh, it, it's got a lot going for it, but there's also been a lot of advancements made in the past 100 years to where you could possibly argue it's outdated and obsolete. And you wouldn't necessarily be wrong, but it is a classic design. It is a good looking gun. It is a solid shooter out to 50 yards on an eight inch gong for me with 46 year old eyes, no glasses. I'm happy with it. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with the accuracy. I'm happy with the gun. I believe it's usable, but, and there's a big but, the caveat is it's a great gun, really like it. But if you're wanting something for concealed carry, there's probably better options out there. Anyway, that's my first thoughts, first shots with the Springfield SA-35. I like the gun, I recommend the gun. Uh, just know its limitations in today's world because there are some limitations for what we would consider today's world. You go back 30 years ago and this thing would have been a prime concealed carry option. It's just technology has advanced. So 
I like it. I recommend it. Just know what you want to use it for before you get it. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys. I greatly appreciate it. This has been First Thoughts, First Shots with the Springfield SA35. I recommend. Have a good one.